Hi, welcome back to Live and Breathe Horses. And today we're going on with this wonderful collection of stories about Tom Doran's More Than a Horseman. It's such a pleasure and an honour to be able to share them. So today's story comes from Peter Campbell. When I first met Tom, we were working on a horse that would pull back. And so we had the last rope around his neck through the halter. That way we had a longer rope. Tom had the flag and he was in the front and I was behind. Both of us were hanging on to the rope. Tom shook the flag and the horse started to go off and so we popped his tail. This was when I was young and not much exposed to this and it was the first time working with Tom. We popped its tail and with Tom in front of me, he pulled the rope because I was kind of holding on to it. He pulled the rope and nipped it and said, slack when we pop his tail. So I remember one time a lady called about a horse that the halter had kind of pulled over the horse's ear. So Tom and me went over there and the horse was in a pretty large sized pen. It had the halter on and pulled over its ear. It was tight and the horse had a little bit of a sore in the front of his ear. Tom says, and Tom was probably 82 then, he was going to catch it. It was a fair sized square pen, probably 70 foot by 70 foot. So I'm thinking, oh Tom, let me rope it. But Tom, he warmed up his arm and caught it. Well, we were playing around with the horse, getting the hindquarters to operate and such and the ladies watching. We get so you could pick up its feet, saddle it, spent most of the day playing with it. Now this lady was very concerned with the halter and getting it off and not understanding why we were doing all those other things. Anyway, I was again holding the coils of the rope and Tom was in front of me holding the rope and the horse was going to leave and we were going to pop its tail. The rope was kind of at, at an angle. The way Tom and me were standing, it was kind of one way and then the other. So when the rope came tight, I popped the horse's tail and Tom's tail. It flipped Tom right over the rope and he's laying on the ground and I'm thinking, oh Lord, I've killed Tom. And Tom looked up and smiled saying, oh, your timing is getting good. You're getting good at that. Anyway, this horse had been dragging the halter rope for quite a while. It had a little bit of rope left on it and Tom really wasn't concerned as the rope had been dragged around so bad with the horse before we ever got there. Right near the end, the lady was getting more concerned about getting the halter off and kept telling Tom, get the halter off it, take the halter off it. So finally, it was near the end of the day and Tom says, OK, Peter, pull it back over its ear with the flag. And Tom's flag had a hook on it and he says, OK. And so I take the halter off it and we're getting ready to go and turn the horse loose. And the lady was kind of troubled about it, that we had turned the horse loose. And she cried out, put the halter back on it. We were leaving the pen and had said thank you. And as we were walking back to the truck, she says to Tom again, put the halter back on the horse. I want the halter on the horse. How am I going to catch it? And so Tom looked at me and said, she couldn't catch it with the halter on it. Do you think it's going to make any difference with it off? Another time, a lady had called with a bunch of babies she wanted halter broken. She'd just brought them from the sale barn, so they still had their sale stickers on their butts. I remember the day being kind of cold and foggy, so the colts were feeling good, running around a bit. We started in the corral and kind of started to check them out, touching them with the flag. They would all bunch up with their hindquarters pointing towards us. And if you scratch too long on one, it might bust through the group and make a loop in the corral. But if you were careful, you could get them to hang around a bit. The funny side to Tom was, we were playing around there and he says, let's see who can have the most stickers in their pocket by the end of the day. 
Tom was a bit older then and he still moved pretty good, but not real rapid. So I figured I could follow those horses anywhere in that pen and get more stickers than him. Funny thing was, Tom would sit on his swivel chair and scratch a few, then move the chair and scratch a few more. Move his chair again and just kept quietly moving through the pen, scratching the coats with his flag. The lady kept watching, hoping Tom would start getting to work on them to face up. Every once in a while, questioning his scratching project. There must have been 10 to 15 colts there to work on. By the end of the day, Tom asked me how many stickers I had. Of course, he knew how many stickers I had, as I only had four or five, and he had the rest in his pocket. It was funny because he had made a joke about how many stickers to gather, but in the end, he barely moved around and got more stickers than me. And it didn't seem like he hardly did anything. When we would scratch these horses, if they got squirmy, he would just move on to another one. He'd never force the issue. So pretty soon, all the horses would respond pretty smooth and he wouldn't scare them. And in the end, they all took turn and look at us. It was pretty interesting to be around Tom that day and watch him do that little with the colts. At the end of the day, the lady said to Tom, how did you do that? He just grinned and moved on. It was interesting that at the beginning, the colts didn't really understand what you were asking. But then with scratching them with the flag on, at the hindquarters and working our way up, pretty soon they would respond and understand that they could tolerate us. And pretty soon those colts were starting to crave that attention of being scratched. It still to this day makes me chuckle that he didn't move much in that pen, but that he got most of the stickers off those Colts hindquarters by the end of it. This, this story I can remember of Tom really reminds me of what Tom was about and how he helped me learn this way. It was not just about horses, but needed to be about life. We were driving in my pickup, heading to a clinic, I believe, in Visalia, California. Tom had done his usual of taking off his shoes and putting his feet on the dash. I can still remember looking over and seeing him so calm and content. We came to an intersection and I was waiting to turn left across a few lanes of traffic. There was a lot of traffic and I didn't want to be late. Tom was visiting away and I was squirming around wishing the traffic would cooperate with me. I had my turn signal on and was kind of tapping my foot with the floor impatiently. Tom looked at me and said, just fix it up and wait, just fix it up and wait Peter. Then again he said, just fix it up and wait, when the coast gets clear we'll go. And that was one of the most amazing things about Tom. It wasn't just about horses, it was about life and all he wanted me to do was get into the turn lane, get the signal turned on and we were ready to turn, then just wait. And it was the way he thought about life. That's what I think sometimes people missed about Tom. The important part about Tom was it wasn't just about horses, it was about life. Whether you were digging a post hole, working with horses or driving a truck. So it was very interesting to me when I was around him to see how Tom fit in all things in life. <laughs> Such a wonderful story. There's a little expression, a little expression, um, explanation at the end. So popped his tail in the beginning is an expression that Tom used. Basically, when a horse wearing a halter and lead rope is being asked to walk around you in a circle and he constantly pulls against you, the person on the end of the lead rope would give a sharp tug which causes the horse to swing his hips away, hence the phrase popping his tail. This technique is only used if the horse is bracing against the person and wouldn't be used 
if a horse simply hasn't had the basic foundation of how to lead. So there you go, if you didn't know what popping the tail was. <laughs> Thank you for joining me today. <sighs> Keep tuning into the light and I look forward to seeing you next time. Mm -hmm.